You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's 3321. Well, the bond vigilantes have finally awoken from their slumber after trillions and trillions and decades of money printing. The bond vigilantes are determined to hold the Fed, hold the line and jack up interest rates. The question is, are there any Bond vigilantes left? And no, I'm not talking about James Bond. So many of you out there weren't even alive when the Bond vigilantes came into play. I'm talking about the people who are supposed to hold the monetary authorities accountable for their wrongdoing, for their acts of evil. And yet it's not happening until now. But is it really happening? That's the question. What is your opinion? Will you please send us an email to kl at kerrylutz.com. And with us now to explore this further is our good friend, Gordon T. Long. You know him well, economic analyst and friend of the show. Gordon, welcome back. Well, thank you very much, Kerry. Glad to be back. It's been a while. Yes, so... Interest rates uh, hit a whopping one, the 10 year hit a whopping 1.6% last week, and the world practically fell off its access. Is this just a one off, or is it a sign of more things to come? It's a sign of regime change, Kerry. Absolutely, it is. Um, And it's really starting to sink in at an incredible speed. It wasn't so much that that 10-year bond just went up to 1.61 and it's come off slightly. It's the speed at which it did and what happened in the belly of the curve. I mean, we had convexity on the the seven-year at 0.75. These are scary mispricing kind of events. And so uh, there's more more damage uh, to go. I, lo- I loved your opening here, Carrie, with the vigilantes. I, there's only a few of us, I guess, that are old enough to have lived that world without was the case. But that's what's happening. The, there is now pressure from two sources, uh, the, the remaining ones, the vigilantes, if we can call them that, but also foreign investors. Foreign investors are very, very nervous about what they're seeing happening here in the United States on, on many fronts. And I think there was a lot of uncertainty with the presidential election and uh, and certainly, you know, for example, the Democrats had more fiscal spending, but it was an uncertainty what the actual outcome it would be. But on January the 6th, suddenly they had to kind of face the realities of what these potential policies would be. And that's fine. But but immediately we had these executive orders and, you know, just that changed the whole advent, whole oil oil gas industry in that we shut down the Keystone pipeline we stopped all the uh, immediately all that was on the first day and I'm not being political here Kerry in any way I'm just this is the realities of how foreigners are looking at the US debt market right now and and not being able to do any exploration in in terms of natural gas and in oil on any federal and and even broader uh, lands, but certainly the federal lands. So it brings into question what's going to happen from prices, and and they're already driving up in West Texas intermediate crude uh, price per barrel. Um, we're seeing it at the the gas pumps. We're actually seeing it right across the commodities, which is part of this this whole story. But they're just they're scared about these policies and the spending. And the, the amount of money that, in terms of fiscal spending that they see coming with the policies, even if they can get them through the Congress. But in line with that, what they're not seeing and the feedback I get is they're not seeing the growth, economic growth story that goes with the spending. It's it's spending that's going to bail out states or uh, that have been have been just overspending or or factly unfunded pensions uh, policies, underfunded pensions in, in, in many ways, very little actually going to COVID relief. So there's a real question of the policy formulation that's going on. And that that's rocked them right to the right to the um, right to the core here right now. And uh, we're only at the beginnings. If you look at the 10 year bond uh, rate and can overlay that with the West Texas intermediate crude on a 10 year basis, you can see both of them at critical breakouts and they're going to and we'll break 
breakout will be higher. But having said that, Carrie, because the inflation was was there, but it, it was just this had finally been appreciated. So it's like a catch up that we're doing right now at a phenomenal rate. But, you know, the market's priced eight months in advance. So we, this should have been priced in, but it wasn't. It wasn't effectively because of what I said earlier. Now it's being priced in at a, a, a very, very quick speed. But right behind this, Gary, we have deflation coming. And, you know, we, we have inflation plus deflation. They're just in different areas. And it's that deflation that everybody's grappling with. I'm not saying that the bonds uh, aren't going to go further up. But when the Fed steps in at some point, and we can talk about what I believe that point would be, um, it'll be because uh, of their inflation, but it's this deflation scare that's coming because we haven't paid the bottom line. We haven't paid the price for COVID yet in terms of bankruptcies, credit contraction, uh, constriction, rather, um, forbearance and all of this real estate dollars that isn't being spent right now uh, for whether it's for residential homes and mortgages aren't being paid, rents that are not being paid, commercial real estate. I mean, we can go on. There's a, just a lot of zombie corporations. There's just a lot of damage that it's not about liquidity, it's about solvency. And that, that's still in front of us. And so the, that's where the bond turmoil is, is, is going on right now. I couldn't agree with you more here. And just reading about these malls, uh, most of them are zombie malls. Uh, their, their tenants have stopped paying rent. Their tenants are bankrupt. And if you want to look and see something interesting and sickening at the same time, just go onto YouTube and type in ghost malls, and there's dozens of them across the country, in Ohio, in the Midwest, in Arizona. It's not just even a question of whether the local economies are healthy or not. I will tell you in Florida, we don't have a lot of malls closing, but we do have some. We actually, uh, several years ago, had the only new mall in the United States opened. I think it was about five years ago in uh, in West Palm Beach. So there's been a few more open since, but the trend against malls, online shopping has just destroyed them. I mean, I know for myself, Gordon, it's so many things that I will just buy online that normally I would have schlepped around to eight stores looking for, especially uh, stuff, computer stuff. Now you just go on the web. Hey, what about car dealers? You know, the whole Tesla model whether you think Tesla's overpriced or not, irrelevant. We're going to electric, whether you like it or not, there's an electric car in your future. And you are going to go on the web or to a store at the mall. And if there are any malls left in your area, otherwise you'll be on the web. You'll order your car, not through a car dealer with some uh, shady character trying to uh, screw you out of more money uh, and get a higher commission on the car. I mean, this is what the car industry has devolved into. It's always been kind of sleazy, shady, trying to extract the maximum amount of dollars, playing on your emotions, getting you to do stuff that uh, isn't in your own financial self-interest. God, sounds a lot like the financial sector. Hey, take a credit card and just go out and buy it, you know, and worry about paying for it later. Get a, get a flat screen in every room. The financial kleptocracy is finally running things. And they love it the way it is, and they're willing to ride the uh, the wreckage of the economy all the way down and exact their pound of flesh the entire time. Without question, I could give you all sorts of examples on that. But, Kerry, you know, when you mentioned you brought up malls, I can remember uh, being on your show oh, three years ago, and I was specifically talking about malls and a mall in my area that I would went out and, and actually did some videos and pictures and wrote a paper on. Of, what, of the of the future in malls and how devastating it what I saw coming, and not just talking about in right there in front of me in a, a, a mall that was basically brand new four years before, and uh, last week they literally bulldozed down that mall that whole mall and have turned it into a parking lot because the values of malls are down sixty percent. You saw that article, I, yes. I, yeah, 60. Well, I, I assume it's something in that area, but just think of what that means to real estate in that one sector. But I got news for you. We've moved to a Zoom economy right now and, and everybody's cost cutting and more and more people are not working from home just because of, um, of COVID. 
they've they've discovered that they can not they the employers can can have more of not all but more people working from home and there's huge cost savings and then small business in america is in massive massive problems that many of them not going to reopen and these storefronts you walk through new york and look at it they're not going to reopen this you know and and real estate undermines the the economy in this country now i'm watching lumber prices go through the roof mortgage rates on a 30 year fan May are up, which is really starting to hurt housing. I'm not trying to be a doom and gloom of housing, but these are the kinds of things we've yet to pay for fully because we've had an economy that's roared back. But, you know, getting back to where we were before. But it, but there's this damages that have, are really going to show up. I said earlier in 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 deflation, but but already we're seeing the supply chains are they're, they're built on JIT and Kanban system just in time, and there's just too many short, little shortages that are causing problems, and are, and they're forcing them to jack up the prices. So it's right now it's good, but you know we lead the markets by meh, eight six to eight months. So sometime later this August September. Uh, hold on, I, I think there's some bad news still here in the in this year. Yeah, I could but, not. but, Carrie, with you but more. Carrie, on the on the good side, on the positive side, we were yelling last year and uh, that that 2021 but it would be the year of commodities, and we could see it because we saw we saw uh, the slowdown coming at the end. But this is before you know we really didn't understand COVID uh, fully and how long it would really drag on. But we saw that the, um, the we were going to face stag stagflation that was uh, was was definitely uh, uh, in headwinds and so there would be a rotation from growth to value and that's what, and and the value is without question in the commodities especially for for quite a number of reasons and we've seen that in not just in the gold and silver though that's been lagging here short term as it builds a pace, but in all all of the minerals on the oil and gas, et cetera. And I think we're just on the beginnings of it. I think we're actually, Kerry, frankly, we're at the beginnings. We've already entered into the new commodity super cycle. And the the debt super cycle is just now coming to an end after having 40 years of a bull market of continuous reducing interest rates. We're somewhere in the zero bound and we're putting in the bottom and that bottom carry. I've got a lot of done a lot of work. It's based on the real rate of the 10 year treasury. I think it's been put in. I didn't say the nominal rate, but the real rate. And they're starting to rise right now. And um, and so I think that that's going to and that cha- when that starts to happen, it shifts movements from a- a- equities and in, in and across to uh, to to the debt market. I, and I, I'm not proposing the debt market. I'm just saying that rotation uh, to other investment uh, options or alternatives. Right. Don't just survive. Thrive. The Financial Survival Network. Arcana Corporation is on the verge of bringing the world's highest grade silver mine into production. The Revenue Virginius Mine in Colorado has proven improbable silver reserves grading nearly 37 ounces per ton silver with an all-in sustaining production cost of only US $8 per ounce of silver. The mine is fully permitted with infrastructure already in place and the company has announced they plan to commence production in 2020. Achieving successful production usually results in a significant upward share price re-rating on the Lasan curve. Arcana trades under the ticker AUN in Toronto and AUNFF in New York. To learn more, go to arcana.com. That's A U R C A N A.com. This is the Financial Survival Network, the information you need to thrive now more than ever. Exactly. So, there, you know, as long as we understand that this this change was inevitable, it had to happen, and the Fed's going to have to do, and the central banks will do everything they can to hold down nominal values. We'll see uh, yield control happen. But um, well, first of all, though, we're going to see this inflation very strong in the bond market, still driving those nominals up. And then I think when they start to fight with yield control curve programs, I think then it'll be the currency will be in trouble. We're still a little ways away from that. I think it'll, they'll, they'll, they'll throw out the currency um, in, a, in an attempt to hold down the yield as long as they can. Yeah, well... One thing is their whole entire world is doing it. The only difference is the U.S. dollar is the reserve currently, is the reserve currency. But every central bank in the world is uh, just throwing the kindling in there. And the result has to be massive inflation. 
wonder how long it's going to take before it uh, finally reaches gold and silver. We've already seen massive inflation in real estate prices. My theory has been from the moment copper started going up and base metals that inflation was hitting commodities because I didn't believe the economy is so strong that uh, everybody's out there buying copper to feed whatever. Yeah, I know the case is good because cars and all that and the electrification of the world's power supplies is happening regardless. But for it to be going up and be over $4 and now nickel is uh, taking off, all of these commodities are taking off. And when you see one or two, you can make the argument for a demand. Oh, no, it's, it's, right? it's, across, it's, across, it's across the board exactly. in commodities. It's, it's right from food, um, soft, hard uh, oil, gas, as you said, the, the mining uh, mineral stocks. Gold and silver have had their run. Their initial run, if I can call it that, are finishing, nearing finishing a consolidation in here. Uh, and I believe we are only at the beginnings um, representing commodities overall, but maybe – and I'm a real hawk on silver for what it's worth. And, uh, and I think we have a lot – a big, big sets of moves still, still to come in there. But, but these, the, those markets, gold and silver, are notorious, or at least gold for for volatility. So it you know, you get, it takes takes strong hands to hold on, um, even though it's uh, going up, or somebody who just buys and and and, and goes away. Um, but but some of the other commodities are fairly consistent. We we see right now we've had a good run, a bit of a retracement for what it's worth in commodities. Sure. Uh, Sure, short, right? But it's just nothing more than a consolidation and um, and buying opportunities to to reposition. And I and I think as we see more of the bond pressures in the bond market, uh, that wave will pick up. That's our that's our well, that's what we're betting on right now. So I'll tell you where our money is. Yeah, well, uh, same here. Hopefully, we're right on that. We we did get some of those other ones uh, right about the pressures we saw in real estate. Or, or not real estate. I meant retail, uh, retail uh, sales. They're holding up relatively well, but the and the retail stocks. Uh, but the retailers are really feeling it. Well, you're you're seeing it. You know, everybody's went online. You can buy anything online, and the retailers of all went online. But it's it's really their capabilities, computer capabilities that are differentiating them online. And, 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 but I just saw my wife, for example, who's not, you know, doesn't really like buying things online. Um, she bought an expensive carpet and she says, what are you doing buying a carpet? She says, but she says, you know, Gord, I could tell the, 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 the granularity of it. I could, I, the, the way that they were showing it online, the videos, the explanations, she got a whole education on it. She felt very, very comfortable doing it. And I, the, my statement here is really that the, the, the ability to sell online has improved so dramatically. And those who've done it well, and there are a number of them that have done it extremely well, but those who haven't made that investment and, or have done it well are just falling by the wayside. So never mind the people who are still out there in a, a storefront trying to sell it with very little value add. You know, yeah. you go to the store, you see what you like, and then you go and find out where you can get it cheap online. That game's been going on for three years, but it's accelerating now. No, I, I totally agree with you. Hey, there's a lot of changes taking place. I just wonder. But the opportunities, if, opportunities yeah. carry to make a lot of money. You know, when you have changes like this, they can be a little scary, a little frightening, but that's when the money is made. This is when it's made. This is, we've never seen better opportunities than we're seeing last year, this year, and I, I think for the next couple of years. Hey, it's been uh, COVID has been, uh, you know, an amazing uh, time for me, I have to tell you, not just having it, but also the fact that uh, so many opportunities opened up that I never really anticipated, that you never really anticipated. But I knew once COVID hit, I sat my partner down. I said, uh, we are never going to have a better opportunity than now. And exactly. And this is it. This is the time that if you're smart, you can get super wealthy. I don't know what the money is going to be worth once it's done, but it's out there and you just have to see the opportunity. I don't think you need to worry about the currency yet. I've always believed that the U.S. dollar would be the last to fall. Uh, may may not be the last because of the, what I'm seeing with real rates. Now, we used, a year ago, we were the highest. Now we're the lowest. And the yuan, yuan is now the, was the lowest, now the highest in real rates. Foreign money is going there, which is a whole discussion in, in, uh, in um, 
uh, in terms of inflation or buying in the bond market rather, uh, pushing those yields up and, and, and getting the um, – and getting the uh, the man for them, but uh, we will um, we will we'll we'll feel those uh, those those impacts for uh, sure with the, with a weakening in the dollar, but certainly not enough to, to scare you away yet from some major investment opportunities. That's what All I'm right. trying to say. All right, and we got to wrap it up there. Uh, just uh, questions, comments for Gordon, myself. Email us kl at carrylutz Gordon, just quickly tell us your website and where we find your work. Yes, please. Thank you very much, Kerry. Uh, Mata S I I. That's M A T A S I I dot com, and we have a uh, twice a week w- a newsletter that's free where we talk about all these in, in great detail. Anybody can sign up at Mata S I I dot com. Thank you very much for having me, Kerry. My pleasure. Go over to financialsurvivalnetwork.com, sign up for a free newsletter. Gordon, we will talk to you again real soon. You bet. Talk to you then. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.